MyMMANews.com on the line with the one, the only, the California kid, Uriah Faber. Thanks for joining us, Uriah. No uh, problem, man. My pleasure. You know, it, it's pretty early in the month of May, but already it's proven to be a big month uh, for yourself and Team Alpha Male. Uh, you've got TJ Dillashaw challenging Henan Burrell for the Bantamweight title at UFC 173 on May 24th, and then just announced earlier this week, Chad Mendez is finally getting that long-awaited rematch with Jose Aldo later this summer. So right off the bat, i got to ask you to play a little game of what if here. What if both Dillashaw and Mendez are successful in taking those straps? What does the California kid do then? Uh, recently, TJ Dillashaw said that he would put that friendship aside to fight you, uh, you know, for the sport. Um, not, not that there's a, a beef between you two, but just to do it just for the fans and for the sport. So do you, do you stay at Bantamweight and challenge Dillashaw, or do you go back up uh, to Featherweight and fight Mendez? Uh, I won't be challenging either of those guys, to be honest. You know, I fight because I love it, and uh, I don't necessarily feel like uh, that's something that I would like, enjoy doing. You know, if they offer TJ an opportunity, and he asked me as a favor to fight him, then that would probably be the only way it happened. You know, I, I, I don't really have much of a desire to do that. But uh, for me, I want to keep on fighting, man. There's a lot of fights out there for me. Um, that's a fight that is, that is destined to happen, you know. Maybe it will. When we fought each other this morning, it's all gonna, you know, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty intense. So uh, it's not like a, uh, it's not something that I'm looking forward to and, and it's going to be shooting for. So I would love to see how that pans out. So, so were you kind of uh, surprised then when he when he said that, or or is this something that you guys have discussed before? Um, I didn't I didn't hear what he said exactly. Where'd you get that? What he said? So, I mean, if if you haven't yeah. heard it, if you haven't heard it, then it's probably not true. It's some, it's probably a rumor that's just been floating around. Well, I, no, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's true. I I, I think the 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 article I saw said you just said if uh, they really made it worth our while then you know he would consider doing it so uh, I don't know what that means exactly it, yeah we're not we're not scared to fight each other that's for sure we do it all the time um so you know I I, I feel like there's a lot of fights out there for me and I'm just gonna kind of see what happens with you know the matchup they can give me and that that made me into all sorts of different stuff you know um you know, like I said, it's not a, uh, it's not something that, uh, that I'm 100 percent against, but it's not something I'm looking forward to doing. Yeah, I understand. So, so what do, what do you think that uh, TJ is going to bring to the table against Burrell? I mean, you you fought Burrell twice now. Uh, what do you th what do you think he's going to do differently that you weren't able to do? Well, TJ and I are a lot different fighters, and we have a, a similar we have real similarities in, in things as well. I mean, he's been one of my main training partners for almost four years now. Uh, but he's he's like a more of a kickboxer. He's got you know real agility with his legs and and um, and some real unique skill sets that that I don't have. Uh, I feel like. His wrestling with takedowns is really good, so I think he, he'll, he'll be able to kind of dictate where the fight goes. Um, the other thing is he's going to be fast. He's a little bit smaller than Bernard, I feel like, and he's a little bit smaller than I am. He's extremely fast and has some really some cool combinations and um, a blending of mixed martial arts that's, you know, basically the new era of, of MMA, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, you know, what, what he's going to be able to do is really push the pace, be elusive, and uh, use all, you know, eight limbs, hands, elbows, knees, and, and feet, uh, threaten on, on the feet, and then kind of dictate and, and be the guy that's better and scrambles on the ground. So um, he's got a gas tank. He's got a mean streak. I mean, he's, he's a good bet because I know he'll be an underdog. He's a good bet in this fight. Uh, over the last couple years, uh, Team Alpha Male has really emerged <laughs> Uh, as, as one of the top, if not the top, camp in all of MMA. Uh, and you guys have attributed that success to uh, bringing in coach Dwayne Ludwig. 
Uh, now Dwayne's leaving, and you know Martin at Campman's kind of thrown his name into the mix as a possible replacement. Is he the guy you're looking towards, or is there another possibility, or what? What are you doing with that? Well, first off, we've been one of the top camps for years now. We had a great year last year, and Dwayne uh, helped out a lot. What happened there was we had a, uh, you know, we had a, a coaching staff and Master Tom was kind of the lead stand-up guy, and for almost a year and a half, he was just not in it. He was, you know, kind of flaky. He was leaving a lot. He was, you know, wasn't helping out with a lot of the guys. He was only helping out a couple of different guys. Just so we needed someone else to come in. And I think our finish rate was the best in the UFC before Dwayne came in there. What Dwayne started having us do is drill a lot more kickboxing and do a lot more kickboxing focus. And so you start to see the results. You got the best team in the world or one of the best teams in the world who is drilling a lot of new cool techniques and, you, and you're seeing some results from it. So uh, we've had, we've had the, the honor of having some amazing coaches show us some tricks throughout the years. Uh, Della Grotti, we've had uh, um, uh, Duke Rufus, we've had, um, you know, Master Tong, we've had all sorts of guys that have come on the stand side, we've got all sorts of Jitsu players, black belt. We're going to continue to do the same thing. We've got the mindset, the network, the structure to have success, and, and uh, we're looking to bring in a new coach and and make sure that uh, that we keep learning and keep improving and adding to that that mentality. So I'm not sure who the coach is going to be, but I know we're going to get a lot out of them, and it's going to be a great fit. All right, just just one more question. Uh, on on your website, you have a timeline of your career. And uh, it dates all the way back, you know, to your birth and then right up to today. Uh, but the projected timeline stops at the year 2020. Is that how long you actually plan on staying in the game? Or is that not really carry any symbolism at all? Just any real weight into your plans is just something that's there. I mean, do, do, you, do you see yourself fighting until 2020 or what's, what's the plan for you? You know, I think the, the real plan is just to kind of follow my heart and, and right now I really enjoy what I'm doing uh, I feel like you know I I, I I like to get into practice every day I like to compete uh, I'm, I'm still as, a, as an athlete I'm still peaking you know as a 34 year old guy I, I'm just getting my man strength and um, I'm not great at planning so I, I imagine I'll at least be fighting for the next two to four years uh, and if I want to go shorter or or longer than that, I will. But uh, terrible planning. But now that there's no significance on that website. All right, all right. Uh, I really want to thank you, Uriah, for taking time out of your schedule. I know you're involved in a million things, and you're always training. So uh, thanks for talking to MyMMANews.com, and good luck to you and all the guys at Team Alpha Male. You got it, man. Thanks again for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you.